In this video, we're going to have a look at the transformations that functions can undergo. In our videos on functions, we focused on four different graphs and their standard equations. We also had a look at all the transformations that they can undergo. The first transformation we had a look at is a vertical stretch. And this happens when the whole equation is multiplied by a constant value in front. The second possible transformation is a reflection. We had a look at two different types of reflections and the first one is reflection around the x-axis, which means that the graph is folded on the x-axis and everything that was at the top would now be reflected to the bottom and other way around. So clearly you can see that y's sign changes and of course then the whole equation sign has to change or you have to multiply it with a minus. Next, a reflection around the y-axis can also happen, which means everything to the left of the y-axis is reflected to the right and other way around. Here, the sign of x will change, which means for the equation that in the bracket we multiply x with a minus. Lastly, we had a look at two different translations. Firstly, a vertical translation, moving the graph up or down. And this, you should already know, is indicated by adding a constant value at the end of the equation. We named this value Q. Then there's also a horizontal translation, moving left and right. This means the value of X changes by adding a constant to x, and we call that the p-value. All these transformations can be described to you in words or by using function notation like in the column on the right. Example, given the function f, for each of the following, determine the equation of the new function that is formed and describe the transformation in words. Function f is a parabola and the a value of this parabola is positive, which means it will be concave up. The turning point is given by minus p and q, which means it will be at minus 2 and minus 1. The parabola will then look something similar to this. This function will now undergo certain transformations. And the first of that is given by f of minus x. Here you can see that the only change from the original function to the new function is that x is sign changed. This change indicates that this is a reflection around the y-axis. In our sketch, the graph will be folded on the y-axis and the new graph will now be turning to the right of the y-axis. This means that the turning point will now be at plus 2 because x is sign changed and still at minus 1 because the y-value stays the same. We have now already described that this is a reflection around the y-axis, but now we also need to determine the new equation. For this, we will repeat the change that happened on the left hand side, so x is sign changed on the right hand side as well. So here you can see that all I did was change the sign of x on the left and the right. You can choose to leave the equation like that, but if you want to rewrite it in the standard turning point form, we want the sign of x on the right to be positive. For this, we need to take out a minus from the whole bracket, which means the 2 will become negative. Remember that the square indicates that there are two of these brackets, and we need to change the second one as well, which changes the sign in front to a plus again. This means that we could actually have changed that bracket by taking out a minus, but because of the square, we did not have to change the sign in front. And here we now have our new standard turning point form. In example 2, 
there's a minus multiplied to the whole function. And I'm reminding you that fx represents the whole y value. So because y's sign changes, this implies a reflection again, but this time around the y-axis. This means that the whole function will be folded over the x-axis and the new graph will now be concave down. So the x value of the turning point will this time stay constant, but the y value will become a positive one. As we've already mentioned, this is a reflection around the y-axis, and now we still need to determine the new equation by multiplying the whole equation by a minus. This means that the whole right-hand side of this equation should now be multiplied by a minus. We will have a negative bracket squared without anything inside the bracket changing, and a plus 1. And from this equation we can see the minus indicates that the new graph will be concave down and according to minus p and q the new turning point will be minus 2 and 1 as we predicted earlier. In number 3 there's a constant subtracted from the x value which shows that the graph will move two units to the right. Then the plus three at the end indicates that it is also translated three units upwards. So describing this transformation in words, this is a translation of two units to the right and three units up. So on our graph, once this moved two units to the right and then three units up, it will be placed somewhere around here with a new turning point of 0 and 2. Lastly, we also need to change the equation. So the original fx had 2 subtracted from x and then 3 added. So the original bracket of x plus 2 now gets 2 subtracted from that. And then right at the end, we originally had minus 1, and now we need to still add 3. And this can be simplified to only x squared plus 2. Example 2. Here we are given a decreasing exponential function that moved up 2 units. We are asked to give the new equation of the function that is formed after a reflection around the y-axis. And a reflection around the y-axis means that x's sign has to change. So the new equation will now be g of minus x, which means on the right we need to change the sign of x. To now ensure that the equation is still in the standard form, we want the exponent to be a positive x, and using exponential laws, we will then have the equation 2 to the power of x plus 2. So, after the reflection around the y-axis, the decreasing exponential function will now be increasing. 